This is not about this. This is not about lowering rates for ratepayers, as the senator likes to point out. There are so many taxes and fees on utility bills. If they really wanted lower rates, this legislature would be doing something about that, but it does not. For 15 years, this state has had a competitive marketplace, an open marketplace for power producers, for transmission uh, providers, with everything being approved by the Public Service Commission through long, drawn-out processes, as we just saw with the two most recent transmission lines of Clean Path and Champlain-Hudson, all of which end up foisting big charges upon ratepayers' bills. This legislation is going to take away competitiveness in this marketplace, which I believe in an open market, a free market economy, competitiveness is a good thing, competing against each other, businesses. Yeah, we're going to interject a state-owned utility into this marketplace to produce power with a significant unfair advantage. No property taxes. That's great. Let's eliminate property taxes on all of the power producers in this state. And then the ratepayers will have a, will have a big savings of their, uh, uh, on their bills that uh, uh, the senator claims to be so uh, concerned about. If we were so concerned about the ratepayers, why does this legislation in its latest version four days ago put in language to appease labor unions to require prevailing wages to be paid, which will drive up the cost of these projects even further? You know, affordable housing projects in this state are exempted from prevailing wage requirements because it impacts the affordability of those projects by driving up costs. And that's being interjected in this legislation, which will further exacerbate rates for ratepayers. This is putting a state-owned utility with a completely unfair advantage in a marketplace that has been open for 15 years under significant decisions that were made in this state through the Public Service Commission 15 or so years ago. And that was, I remember it, it was a long, years, several years long process to go through it. There were hearings, there were debates, it's all over the place, yet now, we're going to completely upend that with this legislation, give an unfair advantage to a state-owned and operated facility that has shown its unwillingness to comply with even the simplest demands of Charge New York, and supposedly over the past nine years, was supposed to have produced 13,000 electric vehicle charging stations. They've created 277 of those, according to Comptroller DiNapoli's report of February of this year. I would submit that the Power Authority is neither equipped to take on this type of uh, marketplace activity, they're not competent to take it on, and it's going to result in a disarray of our marketplace at a time when we need to be encouraging clean energy development. You know, the senator would like to believe, everyone to believe that we don't care about the climate. We care about the climate, and we are realistic about the climate 
and what we can do about it and what goals can be met. The CLCPA and the Climate Action Council is taking absolutely no cost-benefit analysis of any of these projects on what the impacts are going to be to ratepayers by doing these things. There's little to no consideration being given to reliability of the electrical grid to provide the electricity that our citizens of New York need. The direction of this state and the, the uh, Don Quixote style goals that we have are going to lead us into a situation of more expensive energy, less reliable energy, and we're not going to meet the, meet the goals anyways. And even if we do, what is the benefit of it to New Yorkers? And contrary to what the senator alleges is our, my and my colleagues' concerns, we are concerned about these issues, and we are interested in moving forward on our clean energy in New York State and improving our environment in a rational, comprehensive, uh, and realistic approach that will help us meet those needs. We are in the process, through the Climate Action Council, we're going to flip our peak energy demand for electricity from an August date for running air conditioning to a February date heating everything. And without reliability of this system, which is being ignored completely by the process, we will have brownouts and power shortages in the middle of winter when people need heat the most. Then you'll come back and complain when your housing projects don't have heat in the winter. Your constituents aren't going to be happy with that, I can guarantee you. You can go without air conditioning for a little while in the summer, and that's not great either. It's not as bad as going out without heat in the middle of winter without other electric and lighting in the middle of winter. This, this legislation that totally changes the marketplace for energy generation in New York State interjects communism into this marketplace in New York State. I'm sure it's, that's all well and good with your Democrat Socialists of America constituencies that you're representing here. But it's not going to be good for the ratepayers of New York State. When the rates go up, the lights go out, and the heat goes off. We are doing this with absolutely no public input whatsoever. We have no position or input from the New York Power Authority as to whether they even are interested in doing this, whether they have the capacity to do it or not. I can tell you from their track record, they do not. And we're putting at risk the entire energy generating uh, system uh, in New York State uh, on this. So it is just not well thought out. It's going to raise costs unfair competition in an open competitive marketplace at this point, and it's a process that has not had a public hearing. It's a process where this legislation was not even considered by the Energy Committee of the New York State Senate this year, despite having had seven meetings in the last five months, yet this bill miraculously appears on the floor today, the second to last day of session 
as so many bills do. I'll agree with Senator Gennaris on that. It's wrong. It's not a due process. It's not an open process. It's not a public process, which is the way governing through a state legislature should be. But we don't do it that way around here. We're just going to ram it through last minute, and it's going to get done because it's on the floor, so it's going to pass. The consequences will be real. Thank you, Madam President.